What would it take for intelligent machines to attain what we call personhood? Well, first of all, we need to understand that the term personhood can take several different meanings. So let's talk about legal personhood first. For example, we already have in many jurisdictions a convenient legal fiction called corporate personhood. And corporate personhood is justified by legal entities as something that facilitates certain goals of the legal system without anyone mistaking corporations for real persons, persons in the moral sense. So we need to make a distinction between the possibility of legal personhood for machines along the veins of the fictional legal personhood of corporations and attributions of real personhood to machines that would grant them access to the rights of persons, something like human rights. So ask yourself, what reasons might we have to grant intelligent machines the fiction of legal personhood? For example, it might be a convenient way of closing what have been called responsibility gaps between the actions of machines, which when they are running autonomously at high speeds at intense complexity, uh, may be impossible for humans to monitor in real time. We have problems in the legal system of attributing responsibility for individual actions made by machines of this kind when there is no human supervisor who could know what the machine is doing or why at a given moment. And yet there still needs to be responsibility taken for the consequences of the machine's actions. So we might see uh, the machine as acquiring some kind of legal status that the uh, persons, designers, developers uh, who stood behind it would in some way embody in the way that uh, corporate executives uh, embody the personhood of corporations. But that's a very different thing from calling machines persons in the moral sense. So what is personhood as a moral concept? So philosophers have looked at this uh, through several lenses. Uh, one is to see personhood as associated with our capacity for memory, and specifically uh, the memory of our actions. So John Locke, the philosopher, argued that uh, personhood is a forensic concept by which he meant a concept that we use to attach moral responsibility for our actions. And he said only agents who can remember what they've done uh, can be held accountable for it. And so he thought that our capacity to remember our actions uh, was tied to our responsibility for them and thus our personhood. So think about machines. Machines have great memories in a way. They don't remember things the way we do, but they certainly can record their past states and their past choices with greater fidelity than humans often. So does that make machines somehow more of a person than a human who has perhaps a faulty and incomplete memory? So there's problems with the memory theory of personhood, though. It doesn't seem to capture everything that we think is important about persons. Uh, in the 18th century, the German philosopher Immanuel Kant argued that what the core of personhood is, is autonomy, the autonomy of a rational being to choose for themselves how to live and according to what principles. And so he said the ability that we have to guide our own lives by our own self-imposed principles, as opposed to the choice to be governed uh, by factors and forces outside of ourselves. And Kant here was thinking of everything from political authorities or religious authorities who might tell us how to act, or even our own bodies and their impulses, which might press upon us with certain motivations. Kant thought that because humans have reason, we have the ability to rise above our bodily uh, impulses, as well as the forces that act upon us from the outside, from other persons, and institutions. And at any time, we can choose to act according to our own self-imposed law or principles. And that, he thought, is 
the ground of human personhood, the thing that gives us dignity, uh, the thing that gives us uh, a, a radically different kind of value than the value that we attach to things or objects. So Kant said, things have a price, humans or persons have dignity. But what's interesting is that the capacity for autonomy uh, wasn't in any way specifically assigned uh, to human biology uh, by Kant. Uh, in fact, he wanted to uh, uh, indicate that, of course, uh, God could be uh, considered uh, uh, to have this kind of, of reason, this kind of uh, power uh, to act uh, only by uh, his own principles. And so uh, Kant left in a way the door open for any other creature or being that exercises this kind of autonomy uh, to enter what he called the kingdom of ends, the kingdom of persons or beings with this kind of dignity. So what would it take for a machine to be able to assign itself its own law? And if the law that machines today have is always assigned by their programmers, then it seems that machines could never have this kind of autonomy. But if we built a machine that could revise its own programming, that could uh, spontaneously create its own principles to act upon, would that be autonomy of the kind that Kant described? And furthermore, would we want machines to acquire that kind of autonomy? Think about the risks of a machine that can override its programming and assign itself its own priorities and principles. So we need to ask not only can machines be persons, but if it were possible, what reasons do we have to try to make machine persons? This is a choice we still have because machine persons don't exist. They would have to be engineered with this power were that possible. So we have the question of, is it possible? And the question of, is it good or sensible to do? Now, there are other theories of personhood uh, that we should consider, just two more. One is the existential account of personhood. And that's the account that uh, says that persons are those that create their own meaning, their own purpose. Um, so 20th century existentialists thought that uh, personhood is constituted by an awareness of one's own uh, limits, uh, one's own mortality, or uh, what they called finitude, uh, and one's radical freedom and self-responsibility, uh, picking up on some of those themes in Kant about the freedom uh, to act uh, as we wish, uh, and thus a duty to create oneself from nothing uh, with no pre-given plan to follow. Could machines be persons in any of these ways? Could machines struggle uh, with their own mortality? And we see uh, a, a, a way of evoking that question uh, in the drama, uh, The Spark Hunter File, uh, where the protagonist becomes aware of her mortality and therefore challenged by that existential moment of crisis. Finally, there are aspirational theories of personhood. Uh, Harry Frankfurt, a philosopher uh, uh, who wrote about this in the 1970s, uh, argued that persons are those who can have what he called second order desires. Uh, these are ideals or aspirations uh, to, to have better desires than the ones that we presently have. So uh, he thought that uh, we all have desires, uh, animals have des non-human animals have desires, uh, but persons can desire to have different desires than the ones that they actually do have. Uh, and can set aspirational goals uh, uh, to become a, a different kind of being, to become a more moral being uh, than we already are. So he contrasted persons who can have these second order desires with what he called wantons that have only first order desires, uh, who are incapable of moral aspiration uh, and can only desire to desire what they already want, uh, can, can only uh, desire to be what they are. Uh, could a machine ever desire to be something other than what it's programmed uh, to want? Um, could it uh, uh, have the ability to set goals for itself uh, that uh, it doesn't uh, currently have the means of attaining? Um, so think about a self-learning machine, something like uh, uh, AlphaGo uh, or AlphaZero, uh, systems created by the company uh, DeepMind, uh, that can um, uh, progressively attain a skill at a game like Go or, or StarCraft. Is this in any way comparable to the human capability uh, to aspire to make moral progress, right? Uh, does AlphaZero uh, desire to uh, get better 
at playing StarCraft? Well, in some loose sense, perhaps we could say metaphorically, it has some compulsion, if you will, to improve at this uh, game. But what AlphaZero cannot do is want to play or want to be better at a very different game than StarCraft or Go. AlphaZero cannot desire to be the sort of system that doesn't want to play games at all or that doesn't uh, uh, have any particular aspirations uh, to score uh, in, a particular, uh, uh, in a particular domain. So uh, if, if AlphaZero suddenly were able to say, I don't want to play games at all. I want to ride horses. I want to paint. Uh, that would be a very different kind of being. And it's unclear whether we have any uh, possibility of creating uh, machines uh, with this kind of aspirational freedom. Okay, uh, this is a, a philosophical reflection on kinds of personhood uh, that we've considered. But another question to ask is, are humans, uh, just as we are limited in, in all areas of knowledge, uh, do we have an incomplete conception of the kinds of personhood that are possible? Uh, I've given you several uh, forms of personhood that we might think about, but are there forms of personhood that we have not considered? Uh, are there forms of personhood uh, that machines uh, or non-human animals, for example, uh, uh, could attain uh, that we would not recognize as such uh, because of our limited perceptions? Uh, these are questions uh, that some have, have raised. Uh, that's where I'm going to leave you uh, for, for this part uh, of, the, uh, of the discussion. And we'll uh, come back next uh, with a discussion of the relationship between machine morality and virtue. Thanks.